And thanks for staying with us, everyone. First up, the Greek sector and fintechs are set to benefit from a 1 billion CD funding from the Development Bank Ghana in the coming months. This represents the bank's next phase of funding for some critical sectors of the economy. Chief Executive of the Bank, Kwame Duka, disclosed this to Joy Business on the sidelines of the Afri Exim Bank annual meeting in Nassau, the Bahamas. So we're continuing to focus very much on agriculture. Agriculture is our primary area, and I think it's important to set priorities. But one area that you're going to see going forward, particularly this year and next, on the back of the 3i Africa Summit, which uh, we co convened with the Bank of Ghana, is a much bigger focus on ICT, on technology, on automation, digitization, and all that it comes to that. And why is that important? That's important because this is an area where we can directly directly influence the youth. It's a big area for the youth. It's where we talk about portable skills. And it's also where we can leapfrog a lot of the old technologies. And it's also not as capital intensive. So in terms of making an impact on the youth, yes, we still focus on agriculture. Yes, we still focus on manufacturing. But one of our key areas that we're going to start doing a lot more in is ICT. And that's on the back of the 3i Africa Summit. So finally, let's try and wrap up. I mean, I, I get that this funding will, will, would increase to about three billion, and you're doing almost two billion. So that means that we're looking at an additional billion dollars, and that will be spread in agric, and then fintech, and then technology. Mm -hmm. No, that's very that's very true, but that is only still part of the money that we have for lending. You have to remember that this institution was set up with nearly a nearly a billion dollars in terms of debt and equity. Right. And so the debt provided by development partners like the World Bank, KFW, um, EIB, and also African Development Bank is being critical in terms of helping to transform the lives and the businesses in, in Ghana. Ghana government provided equity, nearly 200 million, and we continue to use that as our base and as the, as the anchor in order to continue the lending. Now, Caribbean island country Grenada has revealed that it is offering passport and citizenship to Ghanaians but will be tied to investments. Holders of this passport will have access to more than 140 countries around the world, visa-free, including UK and China. The move is part of the Caribbean island's efforts to attract investments into that country. Ghanaian businesses that are able to invest at least $100,000 will have access to this passport. Prime Minister of Grenada, Dickin Michel, has been speaking to Joy Business. More about the the season for investment, since a lot of Ghanaian businesses are also eye in this market. What do I need to do to get access to your passport in terms of satisfying all the requirement that gives me access to more than 160 countries around the world? Right, so it's an investment migration uh, program. We we recognize that um, you know migration is not just the movement of people, but essentially the movement of capital as well. And so what it seeks to do is to link uh, investment with uh, citizenship um, because obviously we it's a way of attracting foreign direct investment uh, so there are Ghanaians who are prepared to either invest with the country itself by investing in the country or investing in a private real estate development uh, once the necessary due diligence is conducted obviously we want to make sure uh, that it's persons who are upright citizens who uh, are not uh, have any sort of criminal backgrounds or any other uh, thing that would be of a threat to national security, not just of us, but our, our friends and partners. Uh, once the due diligence process is complete uh, and you make the investment, then uh, you would be entitled to Grenadian citizenship. So the, the way it works is that essentially uh, they're marketing and local agents who would work on the processing. Um, once the vetting is done, the applications are submitted to the Investment Migration Office. Uh, we conduct uh, due diligence with uh, police, Interpol, or Financial Intelligence Unit. Um, we also hire international due diligence providers who will uh, do due diligence on the, the applicant. Uh, and once all of those come back and the right boxes are ticked, uh, then an investment sum is, is made. So you have a choice of investment, whether you invest directly in the, the state's National Transformation Fund or whether you invest with a real estate uh, developer. So most of the real estate developments are hotel-type hotel, hotel type developments. Um, and so that, that's a contractual issue between the investor and the, the developer. Well, meanwhile, from next month, Ghanaians can travel to Grenada without requiring a visa. The agreement to aid this initiative has been signed between Ghana and the Caribbean islands. Now, all the necessary uh, documentation could be finalized before the end of this month. Yes, uh, Prime Minister Dickin Mitchell again. Uh, we've signed the Memorandum of Understanding. Uh, we did that in February on the President's visit to Grenada. 
uh, when he came to celebrate our 50th anniversary of independence. Um, so really it's for the instruments, the formality of the instruments to be uh, deposited and for the uh, what I would call paperwork to be done to ensure that it, it happens. Uh, but our position right now is even if uh, once we've signed the MOU, we will operationalize in Grenada. So if you land uh, as a Ghanaian in Grenada, you will certainly get a visa <laughs> on arrival. Um, we committed uh, when we were in, in Ghana uh, about a month ago um, that we would just double check on our end to make sure uh, that all is in place. So I certainly expect that by the end of the month, uh, there should be no requirement at all. Uh, it's a 30 day visa free requirement. So once you, you get in and you stay in uh, 30 days or less, there's no need for a visa. Some more news from the Bahamas. Some international airlines could soon start offering chartered and scheduled flights from the Caribbean to Accra. The agreement uh, being, uh, currently being fine-tuned for these services to take off. Uh, Chief Executive of the Ghana Tourism Authority, Chris Ajman, who disclosed this, says this should help improve tourist visits to Ghana. For, for us, I think we're not just looking at Bahamas as a country. We're looking at the entire Caribbean and how we can reconnect with the global African family here. Uh, you have, um, um, in this country, just about 400,000 people. So that probably might not be enough looking at the numbers that we are targeting. But if you add on Bahamas, Jamaica, Barbados, Granada, uh, Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago, all of them together, then there is a case for us really making sure that we are able to uh, get them. And so to do that, the network has to be built. To do that, the connections have to be there. And that is why we are here trying to engage, find ways that we could um, attract their attention even more. I mean, during the year of return and through the programs like Panafest, Emancipation, we see groups coming. But we want it to be a destination that people in the Caribbean will see Africa as a destination and Ghana as a gateway for the rest of the continent. I think for us, it's creating the market for the airlines. You know, the airlines have said, would there be enough people if they were to put a flight directly from either Guyana or Ghana or, uh, sorry, or Barbados or Jamaica? And so that is our work, working with other tourist uh, boards. How do we make sure that Africa gets a direct flight uh, from the Caribbean. And so we've engaged. I mean, recently Airpeace did something uh, to Jamaica. Um, we also have our own Adansi Travel doing something in August, uh, Charter, to wake up the market. And once the market gets to the point where people are interested, I think we will be able to do something. Now, the Magdan Group says it is working to establish its presence in the Caribbean before the end of the year. The move is part of efforts to extend its services to the Caribbean markets. Now, the group is targeting salt exports, aviation, and its cargo business. Executive Chairman Dr. Daniel McCauley spoke to Joy Business after a high-level meeting with the Prime Minister of Grenada. We are likely to get back to Grenada by close of the year. We'll make sure we hit the place for the end of the year. Since they have, been give, they have given us an open hand, we have to make the best out of it. When we say that, what should we be looking at? Because it, it appears that you have a lot on your plate and they even have more than what you want to offer to them in terms of the doing the business. Well, it's about time we look beyond our territory. It's about time we look beyond Ghana and uh, the Caribbean can be a good place to look at for investment. I mean, the Prime Minister is quite an open person and um, the opportunities there are also enormous. Uh, looking at what we have on our plate, we're not going to do anything different. It's what we're doing that we're going to send over there to see how we can do it better. So in terms of the, the salt business, in terms of the, the aviation business and all the rest, all these things could be possibly uh, started here? Well, if you look at in terms of logistics, you'll notice that uh, there's no connection between Africa and the Caribbean. Uh, if you look at manufacturing, you also notice that it's something we can do pretty well with our salt. We can set up a small refinery a refinery to supply salt in the whole Caribbean. Um, 
uh, plus or minus um, our private aviation, looking at uh, also our cargo movement between Africa and uh, the Caribbean. We can, we can look at it. All right, uh, so that's news from the Afriexim Bank's um, annual meetings in the Bahamas. Still to come here on the on Business Live, Imani Center for Policy and Education projects Ghana's energy transition plan will demand over $500 billion to ensure full implementation. More government funding commitment, except that when you're in an IMF program and all of that, some reforms to the public financial system could unlock additional funding. But importantly, you need more from external sources. Right, that was your look at uh, news making headlines from around the world. Welcome back to Business Live. Now, according to projections by Imani Center for Policy and Education, Ghana's energy transition plan will demand over $500 billion to ensure full implementation. In an interview with Joy Business, an economist and senior fellow at Imani, Dr. Theo Echampong emphasized that the reforms to the financial system are crucial to unlocking private and foreign investments necessary to accelerate the country's transition plan. I was committed to reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 15% to 45% by 2030 and achieving net zero by 2070, according to an economist and senior fellow at the Imani Center for Policy and Education, Dr. Tio Echampon. This ambitious goal will cost over $500 billion and necessitate significant reforms to the public financial system. Um, more government funding commitment except that when you're in an IMF program and all of that, some reforms to the public financial system could unlock additional funding. But importantly, you need more from external sources, so your bilaterals and the commercials to come in, also equity funding, um, and um, even things like crowdfunding that were said at the, at the forum here. And I also talked about the need to actually package the, product, the, the projects you know, into portfolios um, and that will help investors to actually be able to assess which of them they would want to go with rather than them coming in and having to spend a lot of time looking for the projects themselves. Deputy Director at the Ministry of Energy, Dr. Robert Sogbaji, called for the adoption of hydrocarbon technologies. There are technologies which are being used already, such as the carbon capture technology, which are being used in the hydrocarbon industry. So what I am advocating for is that we should invest in the development of these um, technologies to able to harness the hydrocarbons sustainably. The last time um, I saw a technology for uh, internal combustion using vehicles where you can still use your diesel and your petrol cars but still not polluting the environment. It's just like um, where you are using your oil filter and by then, at the end of the month or two months you remove your oil filter, replace it. We have to have a carbon filter where it is inserted and then it filters all the carbon and then you don't pollute. These are the technologies that we want to promote. The event, organized by the Imani Center for Policy and Education in collaboration with Climate Compatible Growth and Lockborough University, conveyed key stakeholders in Ghana's energy sector. And climate change is expected to erode Ghana's GDP by approximately 5% to 15% by 2030. Speaking to Joy Business, Tambek Investment Management Services Managing Director Kwabna Buama highlighted the urgency for businesses to adopt sustainable and responsible investing practices, particularly in environmental, social and governance areas. Stambeck Investment Management Services has reaffirmed its dedication to sustainability and responsible investing in Ghana. In an interview with Joy Business, the Managing Director of SIMS, Kwabena Buama, emphasized that addressing environmental, social and governance issues is now a fundamental priority for the company. The key thing is that our environment is currently being destroyed. We've had the issues around Galamse, we've had the issues around deforestation, we've had the issues around even our sea being contaminated with a lot of plastics. The question is, which institutions are financing these? Focusing on green investing means that we're channeling finances and money to areas that do not destroy our environment. That also fosters inclusion for all of mankind. 
So we are hoping that our clients will join us, um, work towards ensuring that we have a better tomorrow, not just for today. Advisor on Sustainable Banking and Finance Network, Nuru Mugambi, cautioned about the medium-term impact of climate change. According to the African Development Bank, we expect that climate change will erode our GDP by between 5 to 15 percent. So if you can remember the loss we experienced, when you can remember how SMEs struggled, when you can remember how our economies contracted, inflation rates spiked, we should expect five times worse with um, climate change if the uh, effects will unfold as we expect by 2030. The launch of SIM's Responsible Investing Initiative aims to encourage businesses to align with the Sustainable Development Goals, National ESG Initiatives and Global ESG Trends. Well, our final story uh, tonight, the Dean of the University of Ghana Business School, Professor Justice Baule, has indicated that it is important to explore collaborative opportunities to deepen engagements between industry, academia and rural communities. He mentioned this is key to addressing some challenges affecting the agri sector and increasing productivity amongst uh, these farmers. He was speaking at a workshop on supporting rural communities in relation to farming. The stakeholder engagement was a collaborative effort to develop a comprehensive framework that would define the structure and objective of our community of practice, establish effective knowledge sharing platforms, and create a rural innovation ecosystem that ensures sustainability and growth. So the soups, um, creams, and all of that, which, which are exported. I, I, in Accra, you don't see that a lot because if they don't come to Accra, they fly to Europe, and when you go to shops, in Europe, that's where you find them. Now, such great activities exist, but we also are within the university systems and we are struggling to see what we can do. And so this project, um, community of practice, collaborative community of practice, is, is meant to help us, um, as it were, and as it has been nicely explained by uh, Dr. Jampo, to bring together all like-minded and, and active groups to ensure that we can leverage the powers that each of us has uh, into building a network of, of practice that can spare ourselves into achieving a lot more. Project Director at the University of Ghana Business School Innovation Hub, Dr. George Champon, called for more engagement between the rural academic and the industry i think that there is a lot that is missing i mean right from the innovations themselves how you even translate them when we started in phase one last year one of the things we learned was even talking to rural folks there's a way it has to be done and that knowledge exists but we are not using it and most often than not we just go and do the training and then we come back we don't do up with follow-up support what resources do they need to be able to do this all these, these are things that we need to focus on, but we don't. The RISA project seeks to build a vibrant research policy and collaborative community of practice where innovative products by rural enterprises can be made available on the market through the support of a participatory and inclusive rural innovation ecosystem. All right, and that's uh, Business Live. Thanks for watching, everyone. More news is always on our website, myjoinline.com forward slash business. Now time to go beyond the numbers. A brand new show coming up right now with Winston and Isaac. Ah. Uh, thank you very much.